Welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you for joining us here on Health Professional Radio. This morning, we're going to talk about hereditary angioedema. It's a condition that um, Bernd Modig, uh, CEO, and Dr. Jochen Kanole, CSO, are here to talk with us. They're uh, joining us here from Forvaris, the clinical stage company that's focused on developing oral therapies. Welcome to the program, uh, both uh, Bernd Modig and uh, Dr. Knolle. Thanks, Neil. Thank, thanks for having us. Um, well, um, this uh, this company that uh, you're both um, here representing, uh, Farvaris. What um, what is Farvaris? I know it's a clinical stage company uh, developing oral therapies. What exactly are you involved in there? Yeah, so Farvaris um, is a company that uh, was founded uh, uh, now almost four years ago, and and um, it reunites um, the core team that was responsible for the development and first approval in Europe of um, an HAE injectable treatment for hereditary angioedema called the Cadivant. And um, uh, Favaris uh, focuses on developing an oral um, therapeutic option for hereditary angioedema, which is a, a, uh, an unmet medical need in the HAE patient community. Um, and our lead candidate, uh, we call it PHE-121, is, is an orally available small molecule um, that's now in the clinical development for hereditary angioedema. Now, as co-founder of Favaris, what is, what is your background, Bernd? Um, are you a medical professional? Are you an entrepreneur? Mm, yeah, as, as in the CEO role, I, I have a actually a financial uh, background uh, in my prior um uh, to Pavaris, I was the chief financial officer of um, uh, Procensa, which is a rare, also a rare disease company. Um, and that, and uh, prior to that, uh, I was also the, um, uh, the, the, the CFO of Gerini that developed uh, Catamount working on a hereditary angioedema. So, so my background is fi- financial and, and, and business um, and uh, been involved in the last uh, 16 years in building small companies in, in, in um, in the biopharma space uh, to uh, develop them and and bringing them forward. Mm-hmm. And Dr. Canole, your your background uh, briefly, if you would. I'm by uh, training uh, a medicinal chemist, and uh, uh, during my development and career path, I worked in big pharma and had the opportunity uh, to dis uh, to discover. Uh, um, Ikati Band with trade name Furazer, which is a nona peptide, highly stabilized with unnatural amino acids. And then uh, when we uh, uh, found the Gerini in Berlin, we in licensed this old product of me and developed it for the hereditary angioedema indication under approval by the EU authorities. And then the, we sold the company uh, to Shire, and it was uh, acquired by Shire. And in 2018, this product was very successful in the, in the market. It's uh, a rare disease, an orphan disease product, and uh, Shire achieved sales of around 700, 770 million for this uh, product, which only addresses the on-demand treatment uh, and. Uh, on demand means that the patient feel that an attack is coming and that they need to treat this attack and then they would inject furazir, for example, in a, a sub-Q injection once, mostly only one injection is sufficient. Some patients need two or even three injections. Uh, oh, I, okay. Yes, that's a background of why we are back here in the field again with an aura yeah, compound. Bernd, you, you talked about the unmet need uh, created by uh, hereditary angioedema. Uh, it's a rare, potentially life-threatening condition. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, and, and the main um, manifestation of hereditary angioedema is, is episodes of, of swelling attacks uh, that can occur um, anywhere in the body, in the hands, uh, in the feet, in the face, and also very painful um, in the gastrointestinal tract. Um, but it could also be potentially lethal um, if the patient uh, experiences the swelling of the airways. And uh, an untreated 
um, HAE attack um, uh, affecting uh, the airways or the larynx um, is um, potentially fatal. Just how rare is it? Um, the, the, the prevalence of hereditary edema is uh, somewhere between 1 in 10,000 and 1 in 50,000 people. Mm-hmm. Um, it's often a condition that's uh, misdiagnosed. Um, for, for sometimes patients are, are thought to have allergic reactions and also gastrointestinal uh, attacks are not visible to the naked eye. So um, the patients uh, sometimes have to go through a long period until they really get the right diagnose. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that's also a, a, a something that these patients are faced with. I think in the last years, with more therapies becoming available for hereditary angioedema, the awareness um, has increased. Um, it, but it still continues continues to be a, a, a somewhat underdiagnosed uh, disease. A doctor, is this something that affects uh, people at any age, or is there some type of cutoff, or is, does it start later in life? It uh, affects people at any age. The, the mothers tell us they see the swellings in their offsprings, but uh, uh, most in most cases, it sets really in after puberty or the numbers of incre- uh, of attacks increase after puberty when they occurred before puberty. Now you're in clinical trials uh, as we speak. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, we are in a, in a phase one uh, early clinical trials to explore the safety uh, and the PK and PD of one to one, for virus one to one. Now, I, I heard mention uh, of Berlin earlier in our conversation. Are these trials being conducted uh, only in Europe? Are they um, a concerted effort with different uh, countries? Uh, in the moment, in the phase one, they are only focused at the uh, Charité CRO. It's a single center evaluation, as it is a very often is in a phase one. But the phase two plan for next year will be uh, over many nations. Where can our listeners get some more information, Bernd, about uh, Favaris and about your, your trials and things that you have uh, coming up? Well, um, I mean, uh, uh, anybody interested in Favaris can, of course, uh, look at our website. Um, that That's a good source uh, to find out about the company, um, I would say. And that would be uh, com or uh, some other? No, that's correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah favaris.com. Great. Yeah, great, that, that, great. That, that's where we are. Well, I, I thank you both for joining us here on Health Professional Radio. Uh, quite a... Uh, quite a bit of information to take in. I'm sure our listeners are going to head over to that website and um, find out more about your company and about uh, PHA-121 and any of the other trials that you have coming up. Yeah, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Audio of this program is available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download it, SoundCloud, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com.